Hello and welcome to West Indies on 99.94 Cricket Every Day. My name is Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. And with me as ever is my co-host, Santoki Nagilendran, also one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. West Indies on 99.94 is your new home for West Indies cricket content. And we will be dropping into your podcast feed on YouTube and of course on the 99.94 app three times Every week. Thank you for joining Cricket's Conversation. Today on West Indies on 99.94, we're going to be talking about the West Indies women's team, and I guess by proxy, women's cricket in the region as well. Santoki, take it away. Yeah, Mash, and I'm super excited. We've got our first ever guest on 99.94, and we've gone big. We've got a former international cricketer, current commentator, analyst, um, 75 ODI caps, 86 T20 international caps. Mash, do you want to introduce who we have to the people? Of course, I, of course I do. Um, everyone's been saying to us, when are you going to get a guest on West Indies on 99.94? You're like, we, we like what you and Santoki do, but come on, bring someone on. And uh, we started as we mean to go on. Our first ever guest on the show is, of course, Stacey Ann King. Um, by now, I would love to believe that if you're a keen fan of West Indies cricket across the age ranges, women's cricket, men's cricket, you would have not only watched obviously Stacey, but now in the context of the game today, you would have heard Stacey all over the commentary uh, for West Indies cricket. So with no further ado, Stacey, how are you doing? Hi, Marshall. Hi, Santoki. Thank you guys for having me and what an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you, you deserve it, Stacey. Um, um, it's been a pleasure over the last, what is it now? In fact, you can tell us, what is it? two years going on more where you've be just been on the airwaves dropping knowledge um, across all formats of the game. And actually, before we jump into our topic, just in general, how have you found that transition um, into the comms box and working alongside some of the most illustrious figures in the game? Actually, it's only 16 months, to be honest. Um, it's a transition. For me, it's more or less it was succession planning in 2013. I did an online course just... Because, again, I won't play forever, and that's the reality as a cricketer. Sometimes you have to face that. You're not going to play forever. You need to find a way to still be active and, and still make yourself relevant within women's cricket. And I thought that uh, commentary would have been possibly the best option for me. I mean, I'm qualified to coach as well, and I've got a degree in sport management, another area that I, I did a bit of work for Trinidad Women's Under-19 managing that team. Um, so for me, it has just been... I'd say it skyrocketed within this year. Um, I did Women's World Cup earlier this year in March. Then I did Commonwealth Games. And yeah, it's it's Women's CPL. So it's it's just kind of skyrocketed. This year has been amazing uh, when it comes to the exposure and being part of the women's game and just being a pioneer for West Indies women's cricket. Most definitely. And that's a great segue. And I'm going to hand over to Santoki. Because um, Santoki, Stacey immediately goes right in there. The Commonwealth Games, which you and I watched quite extensively for uh, obviously how the Barbados women got on. But Stacey's mentioned CPL, Santoki, and uh, of course, the 60 as well. So Santoki, go on, take that way. Okay, so Stacey, we had the inaugural women's CPL take play this year with three franchises. Just how beneficial did you see it as being for cricket in the region for women's players? I thought it was an important tournament to have because we've seen like India having their tournament, uh, hopefully a, a, a women's IPL on the cards for next year. Uh, Australia has had their WBBL and, of course, England with the 100. Uh, so I thought it was an important time to just make a, a, a well, state their claim sort of thing in terms of West Indies doing something for the women. Um, I think it was just a bit disappointing to see that there wasn't sufficient or enough under-19 players from our region given an effort. Uh, but overall, I thought it was a really good tournament. I thought the girls played well, the camaraderie, the competitive nature of that tournament was it was really good. Do you think, bearing in mind how how short a time frame the CPL took place in, would you have rather seen a longer CPL, or do you think the 60 added something as well to the, the women's game in the region? 
I think the 60 added a bit because most of these girls, since after March, the World Cup in March, 50 over World Cup, there hasn't been anything really other than camps. So probably a good way to ease them into that uh, CPL T20 tournament. Uh, when it comes to games, I thought that maybe some more games could have been played rather than playing each other once. Uh, but it's probably something on the cards for CPL and Cricket West Indies going into next year. And hopefully another team might be added. What was quite interesting, um, Stacey, Santoki and I, when we recorded an episode looking at the CPL, spoke at length about this. And I'm just intrigued, as a former international, how you viewed it. The top performers, actually both across the 60 and CPL, were the international, the, the established international players. So whether that be uh, the overseas players or whether that be the, the West Indian established um, players. So obviously Haley. Deandra, Stefani, etc., and you've you've kind of hinted at it by saying that you're you were disappointed that there weren't more under nineteen players involved. But in general, were you disappointed to not see, I guess, more players? This sounds a bit harsh, but I guess rising to the occasion because we know what hey, with respect, we know what Haley, Deandra, and Stefani can do. And on one hand. You look at it and say, well, of course they were the best players because they are the best players. But would you have liked to have seen some more stellar performances from, I guess, the players just underneath that tier? Yeah, definitely. Um, as you mentioned, Haley, Deandra and Stefani being the marquee players in this tournament, well, in that tournament. And Globetrotters, T20 Globetrotters, when you, you mentioned their names, but again, an opportunity for some of the other players who are within the West Indies setup but haven't gotten scores and, and been as competitive as we know they could be, uh, an opportunity for them to stand out. And I was disappointed with that as well, like seeing, and I'm, I might just call some names, Natasha McLean, Renice Boyce. I, I wasn't very impressed with, one, their communication, their running, their scores, and just overall some of their cricket, because some of those players, they didn't get out at double figures. They were just stuck in single figures throughout the tournament. So it left uh, Deandra and Anissa to get wickets, uh, uh, Stephanie Taylor to get runs for Guyana Amazon Warriors. So it, it was disappointed from that perspective. Were there were there any players sort of on the fringes of West Indies or who haven't been called up yet who sort of impressed you in the CPR? I know from a Guyana Amazon Warriors perspective, obviously it was a tournament to forget for us, but Cherry Ann Fraser performed really well, I thought. So she's someone who kind of stood out. From your perspective, was there anyone else who you thought stood out in that tournament? Well, definitely Cherry Ann Fraser, and because she holds like a really good and, and a special place in my heart because like some of the challenges that we would have gone through in whilst I was still playing during COVID, like we would call each other, I'd call her on mornings just to make sure that she stays focused and we'd go through uh, those programs for West Indies in terms of the fitness programs, just to make sure that at least one player is being mentored and, and is getting in the work. So she holds a very special place in my heart. A good performance from her. They didn't make, unfortunately, Guyana Amazon Warriors didn't make it to any of the finals, either the 60 or the women CPL. Disappointing because they seem a really gelled and focused unit. Of all the teams, I thought that they were focused. They were really focused throughout that tournament. Um, some other players I thought should have stand out, uh, other than those West Indian, West Indian players who are out there and, and well known. Uh, I think from Trinidad, I expected. Just a few of, of their players to stand out a bit more. Yes, generally, I think that I was disappointed to see some young players like Mandy Mangro, Casey or Schultz uh, not getting an opportunity. But uh, what we were saying earlier, the non-performance of players like Shanita Grimmon with the bat because she did pretty well with the ball. Uh, just to see some of them not really using that opportunity. It, Brittany Cooper being around West Indies cricket for quite a long time. It really was a disappointing performance from some of those players. And as I mentioned, those younger players not given a better, a much more of an opportunity because we've seen that West Indies cricket spin is definitely a problem. So I think it was an opportunity to get some of those young girls into this West Indies setup and it will just work with them. I think, Stacey, if we go from that then and look at the the like overarching theme and let's tie this into West Indies cricket then in terms of the, 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 the senior side. So you were at the world cup earlier this year and West Indies overachieved 
um, in terms of getting to the semi-finals. You then went to the Commonwealth Games and arguably Barbados overachieved in terms of defeating Pakistan and obviously they lost to India and Australia, but given the size and uh, resources, that's to be expected. We've now come off the back of an ODI series with West Indies versus, uh, versus New Zealand, where New Zealand won 2 1. And I just wonder how you piece everything together, um, Stacey, because I sometimes feel that people in the region expect more from the West Indies women's team than the current resources that they have to to their favour. So Courtney and Cole's, um, uh, uh, and Brown, sorry, selected the squad. But where do you kind of see the West Indies women's game at the senior level off the back of this CPL and uh, and 60? Well, I think it's it's definitely a rebuilding process for the team because, you know, what well, we saw DeAndre Dutton at Commonwealth Games who announced her retirement from international cricket. So that in itself is a big blow. Then Anissa Mohammed taking six months leave of absence we're not sure if she's going to return and, and how, how active will she be after returning. Uh, Kaisia Knight was injured for this series and Shemaine Campbell. So that series against New Zealand in terms of the ODIs really wasn't a strong West Indies team, but again, an opportunity for some players or, or players who've been in the setup to raise their hands. I think my disappointment was that they, as West Indies, didn't try to get some of those under-19 players like a Janaba Joseph who bats and is so technically correct. Get her in this format of the game. Get her to rub shoulders with some of these senior players as well as the New Zealand players. New Zealand played three 18-year-old debutants. Mm. And to me, that was amazing that they were actually brave enough to you know, throw them in against West Indies. It was disappointing that we lost that series. But again, having camps and, and batting clinics, I think it's 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 a good step, but a bit more might be needed. Uh, into, and we have the, we, uh, when, when I say we have the resources, we have the players, we just need to do a bit more for them. Like, again, get them into this T20 setup. There's a T20 World Cup coming up in January for these under-19 girls start getting them to rub shoulders with these senior players. And I thought it was a perfect opportunity to have them here whilst New Zealand are here, just to, you know, mingle with some of the, the New Zealand young players, those 18-year-olds as well. Mm. There were there were some young players in the side. So, for instance, the Shabika Gajnabi, for instance, um, she didn't perform too well in the series. Do you think it's a case, her being an example of someone who just needs to play more cricket to kind of fight, fulfill her potential? Yeah, and into this ODI series, I thought that Shabika Gajnabi, well, we haven't seen her bowl very much, but she's batted at number three for West Indies in this series. I think that's out of position for her because that's a position you want your specialist batters to be in. And she's failed in two and you still give an opportunity in the third. And I'm all in for giving opportunities, but I don't think that that's a position that she should be batting in. Uh, otherwise, I thought that Chanel Henry was exceptional, one of those players that used that opportunity to stand out as a senior player. I thought she understood her role as finisher and with the new ball getting wickets. Uh, Alia Allian came into the last ODI to replace Shamila Connell uh, and was exceptional with the ball, both batting and bowling. So I thought that there were some positives for West Indies women within that ODI series. And of course, Stephanie Taylor finally getting some runs and digging her way out of that that she's in right now because she's really been in a lack of form. Mm. I, I guess... We talked about um, different Sorry. positions. We saw we saw Hayley Matthews bat at number five in the first two ODIs and then she opened in the last one. And we've seen her over the years bat in the top order at numerous positions. In your opinion, what do you think is the best position for her? I think with the present team and the fact that they, they, they don't have a number of players, it was a good idea to put her in the middle, but Stephanie needed to bat earlier. I don't think, I think the inexperience within Rashada Williams and, of course, Natasha McLean now making her way back into the West Indies lineup, uh, it was a bit too much up at top. And therefore, that number three position should have been Taylor or it should have been uh, Haley Matthews. More responsibility on players for that for those positions. And, and I guess we can't leave Stacey without looking at the elephant in the room because 
if you're going to say the number three position, if you're going to say that there's a lack of experience at the top, you're better than anybody else, I guess, to to kind of comment on Deandra stepping away from international duty. It's important to stress to people Deandra is only 31 years old and uh, she's well within her rights to to make the decision that she's made and to go on the franchise circuit and look out for herself and her people. But how just I don't know how you quantify it, Stacey, but just how big of a blow is that for West Indies cricket, whilst at the same time recognising the contribution that Deandra has made over a long career um, uh, for the for the Maroon. Yeah, well, we spoke about it at length, even at Commonwealth Games, when because she did mention to me that she was about to and that she did send in the letter uh, since July to Cricket West Indies. Uh, she was disappointed that you know they didn't respond right away because they told her more or less that they're giving her some time to to reverse her decision. And her mind was just made up that she's had enough of everything through all the years and. Yeah, she just wanted to look at her options elsewhere. I uh, remember a couple of years ago, 2019, I think she had that uh, shoulder replacement surgery. And again, poor management. And, and for her, that was a big thing, poor management of her injury. Uh, she almost lost her shoulder and that's her right hand. That's her dominant hand. So for her, it was a couple of mental things that she needed to put in place and I mean, her decision is her decision. Uh, I can only wish her, we can only wish her all the best with her future endeavors, but it's definitely a big blow uh, for West Indies women. And again, a chance for a player to say, I am going to take that spot. Uh, Santoki, we can't, we, I mean, Stacey's can't, can't really put it any better than, than, than Stacey has said there. Every franchise, Santoki, or every dynasty of a team has to go through losing kind of what we call GOAT players. I mean, if we go back to West Indies women, uh, Melissa's uh, stepped down. I mean, Anissa's taken six months. Deandra stepped down. Stacey's gone. <laughs> so, so <laughs> teams, have to, teams have to evolve. And I agree with Stacey there, Santolki. It's the, 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 the gauntlet is now set to the next generation. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just a rebuilding phase for West Indies because if you look at that New Zealand team, and I stress on New Zealand because they are the team that West Indies is playing presently, those three 18-year-olds and a number of 21-year-olds on debut, it's to me, it's it's the perfect time to, to start showing. They lost a number of players, Amy Satterthwaite, one of them, most run scorers, uh, uh, Katie Martin, their wicked keeper, uh, McKay, so that, those are three players that they now have to find replacements for. And again, to see the young players and, and something that they noted is, is the fact that these young players were really good in their domestic season. So rewarding them for, for being great and, and their performances, I think that's important. And maybe we just need to look at our domestic setup a bit more in the West Indies where the women are concerned. A, a, a two-week tournament is not good enough. You need to play more cricket and longer formats. Well, ladies and gents, that was Stacey and King um, dropping some gems for us with regards to women's cricket in the region. We really hope you enjoyed that and kind of got a taste for some deeper analysis with regards to the current status of the game with uh, in terms of women's cricket in the region. Santoki, um, I mean, Stacey said quite a lot there and I think it's important that Fans listening to that take on board um, quite a lot of those comments from Stacey because there is not going to be a quick fix for the mm. for the West Indies women's team and when, uh, women's cricket in the region in general. As Stacey mm. says, it's probably time now to introduce the next generation and and like any like any sports franchise or sports dynasty which is on the come up again, you're gonna have to accept that it's going to take time. Yeah, I think it was a really interesting conversation. It obviously highlighted the benefits of the women's CPL, but at the same time, as she said, there weren't enough under-19 players coming through. There seems to be a gap in the system where we're, we're li relying on Stefani Taylor, Hayley Matthews to kind of perform. But that level underneath, wherever the younger players coming in, how are they going to step up? There needs to be more developmental series, more training camps put on. So I think she highlighted a lot of benefits of this year. We've seen a lot of um, cricket compared to previous years for women in the region, but there are still massive systematic flaws which need to be addressed. But MASH, obviously, the ODI series against New Zealand was super close, 2-1. I think the first ODI even it went down to DLS. 
neither team was sure who won in the end. The second ODI was a two-wicket narrow win for New Zealand, and then we pulled off the third win. Um, but that's the ODIs done. Obviously, as you said, we're in a rebuilding phase in that regard. But we've got a T20 World Cup coming up in South Africa in a little over four months' time. So massive, massive series coming up against New Zealand in that format, Mesh. Yeah, m- most definitely. And I think it's important as well to note that, as Stacey said, there were p- there were players missing, or there are, sorry, I should say, players missing. And these are taking a six-month break. That that can't be ignored. Uh, uh, Campbell not not being present. Casey and Knight not being present. And I'm not saying that, well, certainly in the niece's case, she is a world beater. But when your team is in a rebuilding phase, you kind of have to have everyone present. And mm. without a full component of all available players, um, Courtney Walsh and his, and his backroom staff basically have to, it, it's trial and error. It's trial and error at the moment. But like you say, Santoki, four months or so away from, from the World Cup, there's there's plenty of time still to get together the, the kind of best 11 that they think can take that competition on. Yeah, 100%. So it'll be interesting to see how this series goes. And hopefully we see some players. Obviously, we're expecting Hayley Matthews and Stefani to perform in the series. But it'd be good to see other players in the squad kind of step up, the younger players, put in performances to kind of spread spread the pressure on, and burden of the side across players um, ahead of that World Cup. But we'll probably be back for a review show of the T20s and looking at towards that T20 World Cup. But that's it for us now. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with uh, Stacey Ann King. Very, very knowledgeable on the subject. Drop a lot of gems, which um, I'm sure people will be talking about. And that, I guess that that's us wrapping it up, isn't it, Mash? Yes, yes, yes. As ever, people, uh, you can find us on at Carib Cricket. Sorry, Twitter, Instagram, Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Facebook. Um, and let us know. And most importantly of all people, rate, review and subscribe to West Indies on 99.94 DM. People? Stay locked for some more content.